morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Here I am today with Brian Barchak, who's very disinterested in any of the animals that I'm showing him. Right now, he's on TikTok trying to get new friends, and he needs attention. Man, that's crazy, dude. Take a look at guys. I'm actually with Tim here at Nerd, and we have some venomous animals that I am super excited to learn more about because I'll be honest with you, I always tell people I'm no what I consider a venomous expert by any stretch, but I, one thing I do know is this is a rattlesnake. So what kind of a rattlesnake is this? This is an Enyo rattlesnake or a Baja rattlesnake. Oh my gosh. They're one of the smallest species. Um, this one's of a sub-adult right now. Wow. They max out, I believe, between 24 and 30 inches. And this is, I mean, it's got some amazing buttons on it, man. And this is, this is like really, really rattle. nice. Yeah, and of course, guys, you know, I always tell people, you know, snakes in general don't want to bite you, right? I mean, that's not what they're made for. Why do they have rattles? They have rattles to not bite you, right? So that way you're walking around, you come across this animal, and uh, you're gonna hear that buzzing sound. That's its warning signal. Say, hey, stay away. They don't wanna use up their venom. They don't wanna hurt anybody. I always say, if you're out on a hike, whether you're, you know, come across timber rattlesnakes, western diamondbacks, wherever you happen to be out hiking, you find a rattlesnake like this, you hear that, it's okay to admire it from afar, but you don't need to get close to it because it's warning you don't get close. And the one thing, and you know this, well, and another thing we were talking about, the fact that rattlesnakes have an unbelievably springy bite, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can have pogo a, sticks. Exactly. You have a Western, right, that, like, can go crazy. He is insane. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you know, where a normal snake, you might think, oh, only strike this far. A rattlesnake can probably bite all the way out to here because they just coil itself up and lunge at you. Now, do you know what kind of venom this has? Is this a mild It's a hematoxic. It's a hematoxic. And... It'll, it'll deliver a pretty good bite. It's, it's got very small venom glands, very small delivery system, so it has a fairly toxic venom. Wow. What, what does the hemotoxin do? Taps your blood. Makes it horrible things happen. You're going to bleed from everywhere. Digest Awful. You. Yeah. Yep, yeah. digest you while you're still alive. Yeah, so the hemotoxin is definitely a, like the painful bite, right? That's where you're going to you know, potentially lose fingers. Uh, you can have lots of pain, lots of swelling. Uh, whereas a neurotoxin, of course, is going to affect the nervous system. Oftentimes, neurotoxic bites aren't even painful at all. You just start to go into you know, a coma or a cardiac arrest or, or maybe your lungs shut down. Uh, hemotoxins are the bites you're going to feel, and uh, you're probably going to have effects from it for a lot of years to come but this is a beautiful beautiful rattlesnake one thing brian about the rattle and two when i do the tour i tell people if you hear the snake that means the snake's afraid yes. you've scared the snake the yep. snake is more afraid of you than you are of it that snake's going him here please back up yep. please step away i totally agree and that's a great thing to do again these guys don't want to hurt you at all, you know, but look at that. It's a great. And see, now he's a little bit more calm. He stops rattling. So I'm so just going to get a good look at the rattle. The tight it. It's a beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Look at that rattle. Woo. Man, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Fun times, guys. Fun times. <laughs> She's buried, huh? She's a white monitor. I don't, I haven't worked trying to basically tame her or anything. Just let her go. It's, it's basically, it's very important as Jane's stock. My buddy, Andre, over in Java, worked very hard to get her. Oh my gosh. It yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a leucistic style monitor. So it's got like these blue red eyes. This animal is an ivory. So it's like a white, white animal, but it's very dirty. Right. Yeah. Of course. And so you can't really tell, but okay. Look at, look at some of the nails. Oh my gosh. Here. White. Yep. Clear. Unbelievable. Yeah. This is, this is a imported animal. Originally. Yeah. yeah so I'm just not so much worried about the habituation. I'm not worried about her socialization at all. Just keeping her happy and healthy. And, and hopefully feeding some eggs. Well, yeah, before long, we're gonna go, but look at her eyes. So she's got like eyes, like it's blue and albino eye. I'm gonna show you her claws too. Can you see her claws right there? Yeah, yeah you can see the translucent claws. And, everything. and then you get dark claws. I mean, we could clean her up, but right now it's all been about uh, pretty much the welfare of the animal. Yeah. But she's uh, very, very special. I can see that. Man, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. Tiger retake. Tiger retake. Yes, my, one of my personal animals who we've used for education and stuff before. 
Well, you know, it's funny. I've only met you shortly, but you seem to have a lot of personal animals here. I do. I do. I are we going to still talk about me being able to take the one? You are not taking my pie ball. That, that's my baby. No. Okay. Well, Kevin said I will pick it. one out for you, though. Oh, yeah? I'll pick the second best one out. The second best? <laughs> that was the, that was the best to me because I love him, but I will pick wow, you a very nice pie ball. Best. You, you can have Rob. Best. You can have loser. Rob. <laughs> No, this is actually the first rattlesnake that I saw in person when I was a kid. Actually, my buddy Don Hamper, who unfortunately passed away recently, used to breed these guys, and they are unbelievable. Tell me a little bit about them. So this is a South American rattlesnake, a Uricoan. I believe you find these down in Venezuelan. It's a very potent rattlesnake. Yes. Most of the South American stuff, Central American stuff, is going to carry hemotoxic yeah. and some neurotoxic yeah. properties. And uh, that's a, a pretty potent venom. They have a ridiculous strike. They have this really cool high ridged backbone that just makes them awesome. They have that nice triangle shape to the body. Makes them really stand out. And this look at that pose right there. I mean, he is just like going. And when I say he, it's a pretty evident male. The thing that's interesting about rattlesnakes, as you can see, males will have a really large defined long tail that's pretty easy to to see but wow i just there's something about the color that gray and kind of sandy look to these guys i love your cohen's and i always have again it's probably because when i was a teenager i saw them and i was like as a matter of fact i hate to say it i was like 15 and i almost bought a pair from don <laughs> probably would have been a bad mistake to be totally yeah. honest with you but nevertheless it was still a really interesting animal and i've always just had a love for these guys ever since and the thing that's cool about rattlesnakes of course is that they have live young, you know, they're, uh, they're just, I mean, how many babies would a year of cone have? You have uh, any ideas? They, are, they have, I think, 12 to 15. 12 to 15. So a decent sized litter. Could you imagine 12 to 15 little baby rattlesnakes? And this is a pretty big one, too. Cool He's thing a, about this snake, too, look how confident it's being. Oh, it's it, so confident. It's not rattling, it's not freaking out, it's no. not striking. There's pure confidence there. Oh, it's such a beauty, I tell you what. It's a, Thank you so much for the treat to see this guy, because I'm in heaven. It's my favorite. Oh, my <laughs> I haven't seen that snake for a while, and I'm just like, It's damn. beautiful, dude, right? Jeez. Right, Imagine thing. the camouflage if that was out in the wild, blended in, laying in a bunch of leaf litter. Probably wouldn't see it at all. Yeah, you probably would not see it. You'd hear it before you saw yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's crazy. Dobrik, what do you do here? Uh... Articulated pythons. Articulated pythons like what? Like babies? We got all these four foots right here. So these are the biggest animals we have in, the, in this room, biggest enclosures. And then we have, you know, our CB70s, which are, are usually like, you know, year old animals. And then we got all our cute little babies. Some of which, these these ones are tend to be like the this year's babies. And then we have our, our animals that are still, that have gotten a little bigger, you know, the great eaters and everything like that. You do then, man. You're, you got a lot going on. That's yeah, you know, I mean, I, stop I talking. Get back to I work. Think, I don't think I have enough to do, honestly. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe you should set up a blog on the internet. I hear that it Ooh. works out well for you. Wait, Dan doesn't know something dumb. Oh, Man, that's crazy, dude. Rob, this thing is ridiculous. I mean, Super it's, it's cool. crazy. I've never seen one. I've seen pictures of them, but uh, I've never seen one in person. Yeah. Of course, this is a, an, an azantic water monitor. And uh, you guys have a few of these, you said. Yeah, yeah. We're working with a small project of these, trying to get them into our breeding program, trying to breed them into the albinos to make some double hat snows and exciting stuff like that. But it's just such a striking animal because, you know, your typical water monitor is going to be black and yellow. But when you remove that with the azanthic, you just get this nice crisp white and black just a know, it's, super it's like newspaper print you know yeah, what i mean it's, it's ridiculous so cool. and of course this is uh this is an import here so you can see it's not quite as habituated as these guys get into uh second generation third generation uh you're going to start seeing them calm down a lot more but uh nevertheless you said you produced one baby last yeah, year Yeah, one baby last year oh, and uh we're looking at pairing up we have our adult pair paired up right now so we're hoping that this year we'll get a better luck with uh production because they're still a little bit young yeah. when we first paired them up so we only got the one baby but this upcoming season, we should have a whole bunch yeah, of Yeah, can you imagine snow monitors? I mean, this just unlocks an entirely different color palette. You can bring them into T negatives, T positive, get them into sulfurs, get That's them into, you know, oh my God, there, it's gonna be some, yeah, because the sulfurs are gonna be more white, you know, yeah. just more extreme, uh, really cool. I'm glad that I had an opportunity to see something this awesome here. Man, that's crazy. Um, do you know what? Listen to it.
Doggy, that is a snake right there. Now you see a lot of Kaboom Vipers, and I certainly have seen a lot of them, but this one is big, it's beefy, that head on it is ridiculous, and it is gorgeous, dude. How long have you had this one? Oh, we've had this snake almost 10 years now. Almost 10 years. And just look at the head on that thing. I mean, that is incredible. Of course, Kaboom Vipers have the longest fangs of any venomous snake, and uh, the thing that you got to be careful about, of course, if you're ever, you know, needing to melt this or something like that, is they literally will push their fangs right through the back of the mouth. So a lot of times, when you've got them necked in order to melt, you have to be very careful because they can push those fangs right through and actually bite you. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely amazing. And, and again, these guys are unbelievable ambush hunters, as you can see in the leaf litter. And I've been down in some areas in Africa where it's you literally, you couldn't see these guys. They blend right in with the leaf and they're ambushed so that when something comes by, prey comes by, or unfortunately when a human comes by, steps near it, it's gonna strike. And they are lightning quick. One of the fastest striking snakes on the planet for sure. So, oh my gosh, Tim, this thing is so cool. It's Listen. amazing. And it's a very confident animal. If you notice, it's not panicking. It's just, no. it's giving you a growl, it's saying, hey, yeah. Every now and then it'll do that tail, tail, head tilt yeah. and stuff. But it, it's not a really striking animal or a really explosive animal. It just says, hey, I'm here. Don't touch me. I'm going to sit here and talk to you. <laughs> yeah, just look at the body. Look at it just swell up there. The body just completely, it's just pushing all the air out of the air sac, making that unbelievable hiss. I mean, it's, it's crazy how majestic that animal is. And I've said it a million times that, you know, from venomous snakes, gabbies were one of the animals that really kind of got me going when I was young. And I've never owned one. I had one in my possession for about 30 minutes. And I panicked because I was a kid and I was like, I got to get rid of this. So I called up a friend and he came and got it because uh, I was a little bit too young for the thing. But nevertheless, I love these guys. Hopefully one day I will have Gabby's because I love them so much. Again, another live bearing pit viper. So unbelievable. With giant litters. Giant, gigantic, gigantic litters. Gigantic litters. Well, you can see how big that snake is. Hefty. It's going to pop a lot of babies. And that's Whoa, not even a more. big one. They, this one's a male, but they, the females, I mean, they can get five, six feet. Sure. Typical not to see them that big, but they can get that big. Typically the ones you see in the pet trade and stuff, this is being a good it's size a animal. Good size, yeah, very good size animal. Again, With a big, head impressive ridiculous. head. Yeah, crazy. And uh, I'll have to get one of the fangs to show you, but this snake shed its fangs a few oh. times now, and they're a good solid inch. That's a that's an impressive fang, that's especially when you compare it to like the Western Diamondback, who's, yeah, who's just got a little. five to six foot animal, who he's also shed his fangs, and I have some of them, and they're probably three eighths of an inch yeah, long yeah. compared to an inch and an eighth. <laughs> oh my gosh, unbelievable! That's cool, man. I love venomous snakes, guys. It's been a pleasure hanging out with some of these guys today. Unbelievable. Man, that's crazy, dude. This fang here is from our five and a half to six foot Western Diamondback rattlesnake which is a big animal. This is maybe coming up on three, maybe a little over three if it had a complete tail. That's his fang he shed two weeks ago. There's a huge difference in those oh. fangs over the length of the snakes. Crazy. Man, that's crazy. Dude. We're all gonna die. <laughs> so Kevin, tell me about these little monkeys. How old are these, little baby kings? Yeah, these are, so they're coming up and being yearlings. Okay. A year and a half. It, it, so they're actually over a year now. It's a year in September. Okay. So these are uh, some captive bred king cobras. Much, that, much nicer disposition, huh? We're raising them. Uh, their health of them is just spectacular. Uh, they're obviously wonderful education animals, plus uh, good breeding stock. And uh, we've done a fair bit of socialization in these guys. So yeah. it makes them not as dramatic right. to, to show off in a video. Um, because they really are smart and they basically come to understand that we're part of their world and we're not a bad thing. So they've never had a bad experience with us. Right. Yeah, you can definitely see it. Now, are these rodent eaters or do you still have to feed them? These are actually still uh, my supply of stillborn babies and eggs and stuff like that. Uh, we're still at that point. We're going to start doing uh, like rolling things in sheds and everything like that. But we've been kind of putting them on a growth spurt. One thing I did notice, because I have a big adult male king cobra who eats rodents and snakes, and I noticed, kind of believe that it, it is probably good to include snakes into their diet. Right. Essentially just rodents, because I think they digest them differently. Right. Uh, there you go, look at that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So we caught her attention. So hognose, eastern, western, or whatnot, will raid turtle nests. So we're looking for, we were watching turtles nesting, mm -hmm. and we're finding hognose in the nest. In the turtle nest. Yes, and they were eating the turtle eggs. So oh then if you caught a hog nose and it gets upset, it throws up an egg. What? So I, I know that for a fact. I was, <laughs> I was out, it? yeah, out in uh, Minnesota. Man, that's crazy, dude. If you like this video, Help. if you like this video, please do me a favor and click on this video where I was playing with some other cobras and you can do a whole playlist down here, right on this side. And if you don't mind, subscribe over here while you're at it. Turn those post notifications on. As for now, guys, have a wonderful day. Me and Lilith are just gonna play around a little while. I hope I'll see you tomorrow.